Welcome, everyone. We are going to have another awesome, awesome hands-on and lecture today about book art, uh, the improvisation of book art. We have a wonderful program for folks today. So let's get started. Today's program is hosted by two different wonderful organizations. And I like to just take a moment and recognize both organizations um, as we start. The Renaissance Society at Sac State or California State University Sacramento, where um, adults can learn, connect and share provides opportunities for participatory lifelong learning and community engagement for adults. So we really appreciate uh, Renaissance Society. Several members are actually several people, participants joining us this morning are members of both organization. The second organization that is co-hosting today is Friendship Force of Sacramento. It is the local club of Friendship Force International. There are over 300 clubs globally and we explore to understand and then serve. Our organization is dedicated to cross-cultural understanding. Our members travel and host others in the name of friendship and peace. So if you're interested in either one of those organizations, I've listed the, um, the websites, but you could also Google either of those names and you would be able to see that same information. So for our etiquette today, during the event, if you would please mute yourself, if you haven't done so already, and I can tell a number of people haven't uh, muted yet, so if you could please do that. We would appreciate if you would use chat to ask questions. At the very end, we'll open it up. Um, but during the presentation, if you would please use chat and be kind and respectful to everyone. Remember it's fun and that your instructors are volunteering to present. So our supplies today, just a quick overview and Mary Ellen will go into more detail. Books can be made from lots of different material. You see a few examples there. Index cards, handmade papers, papyrus, paper bags, fabric and even popsicle sticks. I've not heard of that one. So you can create your own using a single 11 by 14 piece of paper or card stock, but just grab any materials that you have around the house and use your imagination. Some other supplies that you might find helpful would be a stapler, binder needle and thread, bone folder, ruler, glue sticks, glue or glue dots, use your imagination, create any kind of book you want. This is more about inspiration today. So I'm going to stop sharing and Mary Ellen, I'm going to turn it over to you and welcome and teach us about bookmaking. Great. And I want to introduce Larry Fox is here. Larry, can you speak up? Yes, I can speak up. Do you have your camera on? Are you going to use your camera? I can turn that on too. Okay, great. So Larry and I are going to um, team teach this without working together beforehand, if that <laughs> is okay. So I'm going to be asking him, some of this is by asking him a lot of questions. I want to start by, uh, and Larry, do you have some of your books for you to be able to share your own material? Do you have them with you? I'm sorry, I don't today. But, um, okay, that's all right. I have uh, tons of stuff that we have pre-done. Larry and I did this talk earlier, so I would like to share screen. And Larry can talk about some of these. Excuse me while I find the slideshow and get us started. So we are calling this Improvisation Books Made Simple. You will notice that some of these books are not so simple. Larry, you can pop in anytime you want to. We wanted to show you the complexity and the fun part of book arts. Larry is quite a book artist himself and a book binder. He's taken a lot of classes from the Center for the Book in San Francisco. This is a book using, um, those are actually sculptures of chicken feet. We're going to talk a little bit about altered books. It's one of the things that I like to do, where you literally just take a book and um, alter it. Larry, jump in anytime you want to when you know what a book is and what this is. Okay. Well, this is a deconstructed book where it was uh, all the writing is um, taken apart. 
um, into uh, strips and then it, it's been woven into, uh, it looks like a basket, but it's still a book. And this one. Okay, this is um, something similar where you basically could deconstruct the book and you use um, find if illustrations in the book that you like, and then you can um, expose them and um, using, uh, well, using knives, you can uh, cut out sections of the pages and um, expose and make a really fascinating uh, inside of this book. And some of these will go over really quickly. We're not expecting you guys to do this today. We just wanted to show you what the possibilities are. Um, this is, uh, uh, and these were artists that used to participate in uh, different ones. This one was actually left out with water so that the salt uh, condensed on the book. Larry, you wanna talk a little bit about what a concertina or accordion book is? Well, accordion book is a book where you have um, one long page. So the uh, book is made, basically you would take, uh, print up the book on several pages and then they would be um, folded so that you would be able to open it up. And sometimes the book is read from one side and sometimes both sides. And we're going to be showing you how to make some of these books. This is an artist book called A Walk at Hill End. This is uh, also one, this is using, can you explain what a double signature is in a, a, in a book, Larry? Well, a signature is when you, when you have, um, if you look at the, there's a, uh, the right side uh, front has a signature, which a signature is when you have pages that are bound together and they are uh, bound with um, uh, thread. And then you are able to, uh, well, this one has at least, these are two signatures. So um, the behind Breakfast King, that's one signature and the other, the right side has another signature where, where then they're put together and making one book. Does that make sense? Yes. And books can also be sculpture. What, what I love about this particular one is I uh, can't afford them anymore, but I used to like collecting four edge books or paintings. And this is where literally the books are stacked and then a mural is put in front of it. I think this one is in Amsterdam. I love uh, Trompe Loy, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So mm -hmm. again, we just wanted to show you that books can come in many, many forms. Larry, you want to explain what this kind of book is? Well, this is a book that has a unique binding and um, it is uh, a basically, well, as, they, as they're saying, books can be made out of anything or from anything. And this one is made from basically uh, like a, it almost looks like a piece of furniture, except it's small. So it would be a three dimensional shape with writing. So that's with a binding and with the, the writing, it's still a book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just wanna show you the, just what the, uh, the options are. Uh, I call this a, a map fold. Is, is that what you would call it, like a pop-up or map fold book, Larry? Yes, that's, it would probably be a, a map fold, yes. I would say that would be a good de definition. And this is also a form of an accordion book, but it's using all, uh, every one of them. And I wish we could show you today, it's uh, impossible in an hour. But when we have, we do have some people in Sacramento, we'll do a longer class on this where they're all uh, bound. Not all books are meant to be read. This one, I don't know about you, but I always have blocks like this in my basement or old, um, um, what do you, uh, uh, frames that you can put together. And again, we're going through some of these quickly. Do you remember the story about this book, Larry? I'm sorry, I don't. Yeah, I know we talked about it before. And I am going to ask you to comment on this one because I have done something like this and it's really fun. Well, this one is basically looks like a portrait book where you basically would take uh, a shape that is, you know, like a uh, uh, model for like for a wig stand and you can cover it in paper and turn it into 
a book type object. And uh, I do have a friend that does these for birthday things where she actually does the story of a person in the hair. And we just wanted to show you some large format books as well. Origami book, Larry, well, or just paper folding. I, I'm not sure if it's origami, but it looks like, oh, it's paper folding because origami is a little bit different, yes. And this is one of my favorite our, uh, uh, books. So this is actually works like a, uh, a toaster. And this one, Larry, I think you've actually created books like this. So do you want to describe it? Well, this is, this is a book that um, has a binding that's shaped like a building. And then they have um, everything uh, basically relating to that shape. Um, so it opens up and then you, I don't know, sometimes you would have um, multiple pages, but this one looks like it has one main page in the back with text on both sides. And that is it closed. Uh, yes. This is actually made out of um, a pine, a book that's put and assembled together. And um, this looks like dynamite, but I'm not too sure exactly what, what it has. So I uh, just wanted to talk about altered books. We're not going to do them today, but you can uh, just see an altered book is a book that's been painted, drawn on, cut, torn, burnt, sewn on, rubber stamped, collaged, and generally altered into a work of art. They fall into the realm of the unexpected, a book bound using unconventional materials or text presented in a unique and unusual um, manner. Um, I collect old books from garage sales and from resale stores and uh, uh, libraries all the time and refashion them. Um, so this is just, again, more about it. One of the things is, is that, um, uh, again, that they were first altered out of necessity because paper was very rare and expensive to make. Instead of throwing uh, the book away, it was recycled. Uh, and I just, a friend of mine did it where she just wrote in between the lines on a book when she had literally no money. It became a scrapbooking technique as well. Larry, did you want to make any comments on altered books? Well, it, it, like it's, you're saying, um, a book can be made to look like almost anything. I um, like doing paper sculptures. So I have something that could almost be called a book, which is a paper uh, model of the Taj Mahal. And uh, so it's, it is not, it has um, designs on it, but it's not, um, there's no text that's really read, readable, but it's still all made out of paper. So what, is it a paper, um, a book, or is, is a wood a book? You know, it can be all sorts of things can be books. There's, it's really, there's a lot of um, blurring the lines with what is a book and what is not a book. So uh, Larry is going to be able to do a class for those of us in Sacramento. There is a group that uh, was going to meet uh, earlier. The original instructor is not able to do it. Larry does something called a tunnel book. And he will, am I right, Larry, be providing, when we go to schedule that, the PDFs, that people can actually cut those out and follow along when the time comes? Sure. That's what we'll do. Is that next week? Uh, I think it's not till the 15th. Good, good. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's on the 15th or the 22nd. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, we're gonna do two books um, uh, today um, if, if you, we have time. And one are just simple pamphlet books and the other is an accordion book. There is a sample of it. And I am hoping, oh, I'm gonna have to show you and then go back and stop. Uh, the materials, if you have them, these are some of the materials you can use, a bone folder, utility knife, cutting mat, glue. A uh, brush for glue, wax paper, book board. Um, we're not going to be using that one today, decorative papers. I will tell you that my book art supplies are at my art and writing space. I thought I had it here at the home. So my apologies for not having a lot of those materials with us. I was going to say, oh, if you go back to the, that other page, Mary Ellen, okay. I, was gonna explain, I don't know if everyone knows if you, uh, there's different ways of uh, taking a screenshot. So if you don't want to have to, to, um, Take, uh, draw, quickly draw or write out all the uh, materials, you can use the command with well, the command key, the shift key and number three for a Apple computer will take a screenshot of this so that you can have all the materials um, on a list on your computer. 
So thank you. And those of us that are in the region did receive a material list and instructions. Everyone who signed up today, we will get your email addresses. We'll send you both the PDF of the materials and the instructions and the other instructions as well for today. And um, I'm going to just show you the simple fold first. Then I'm going to show you one of Larry's accordion books. Um, we're going to go over all of them, play the things, and then we'll have a time to uh, to do them. But accordion books, as you can tell, are really um, perfect for exhibiting uh, poetry stories or arts. Each fold can showcase a single word, line, or story. And you can just see the start off is to literally just have a piece of paper that's cut. We're going to show you a YouTube, fold it over, and then you can see the rest of the folds here. We'll go through those later. You'll see them in the slideshow. And this is for continuous strip accordion books. This is um, exactly how you do it. You fold the pat paper in half and crease with the bone folder. You open it and fold both ends into the center. There's different ways you can do this. We're gonna go over these instructions again. So, um, and I'm gonna stop sharing for here so that we can talk about accordion books. Mary Ellen, really quick, can you talk about what a bone folder is? Yes. Larry, do you want to do as uh, explain what a bone folder is while I look for mine? Well, um, a bone folder is a tool that you use. It's um, originally was made out of actual bone, but it's now it's a kind of plastic. Sometimes you can find the ones made out of bone, but it uh, looks kind of like a, a, a knife. But um, what it will do is give, when you're folding your paper, you need to give it a sharp crease and the bone folder will be something you slide across the uh, the uh, fold and it, you can make it nice and sharp. And when you don't have one, you can use the end of a ruler as well uh, if you don't have access to material. I want to show you an accordion book that Larry did. And uh, this was actually, I have to get to the front. Uh, Larry, I've got your front page wrong. Raise, there you go. Great. So Larry actually did this as a promo for an art show that he was going to do. Larry, do you want to explain how you created this book? Well, um, what I did was it was um, uh, I designed the book on Photoshop, uh, but it was a series of paintings I did that was shown at this gallery. Uh, and so it's uh, I just took the, the paintings put them on the page, made sure all the pages were the same size, did it in Photoshop, or actually probably did it uh, on another program. And um, then it's uh, printed out. And then when you have it all printed out correctly, it will uh, fold correctly. So you have a nice little accordion book that looks like a regular book. Or a and I'm Oh, I'm sorry. I'm making an assumption, Larry, that um, that you did this not by the instructions that I use, but by scoring every three inches or so and folding correct. according to the score. Am I correct? Right. Good. And so he could have done this blank and you could just tip in. Do you want to explain what tipping in a piece of art or um, art or photo is? Well, in um, especially books done during the uh, 17th and 18th century, if you had a colored picture, a watercolor or something, or uh, an illustration that was full color, what you would do um, is you would cut it out the picture out of um, whatever size the picture is, and then you would be tipping it into the page so that um, pages of um, books that were printed in black and white can have colored pictures that are tipped in. Great, and here is another one that we wanted to share with you. This one is done by a friend of ours, Jennifer Teixeira, who is a printmaker. She did this one using quilt patterns. The quilt patterns themselves are just um, looking at them. It just looks to me like she was just using marking pens for this. What I like is she then has a description of each quilt in the back. The book folds up and then she put it into a little box, the little tiny quilt book box. Put some quilt fabrics inside and created a really fun book. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to do this in two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and show you a really quick YouTube on how to do an accordion book that we thought would be easier than us trying to do it with our hands. And then we're going to give you a few minutes to see if you can find a piece of paper and fold yourself. So let me share my screen. Simple four page accordion out of one sheet of recycled copy paper. We need just one piece of paper for this accordion, and I'm using recycled paper with writing on one side only. I'm going to take it, I'm going to fold it in half to start with so that it's like a hot dog, and I'm going to have the writing on the inside, and I'm going to crease it. Then I'm going to take it, I'm going to fold it in half the other way, line up my corners, and crease it. Take just one layer, take this edge, fold it back, line it up with the fold and crease it. Then I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Take the edge, flip it back to meet the fold. And now I have my four page accordion. It doesn't really matter, but it is my preference to use it with the folds on the top. I'll be showing you how to add a cover in another video, but you don't really need one because you have the double weight of the paper. This is thick enough that this can function as a book on its own. And I want you to see that you can make things as simple as possible. Sometimes you don't have a lot of time. Sometimes you don't want to bother to add a cover and you can still have a lovely little book. Thanks for watching. And this is Susan. Uh I could never pronounce Kupachinsky Gaylord. Uh, I have had the good fortune of taking four or five different classes by her, and she has wonderful books that are available on Amazon. So now what we're going to do is to ask you, those of you that want to participate, to just find a piece of paper or cardstock, and you can use almost anything. Mary Ellen, really quick, if I can interrupt, I just put in the chat two links. One is the link to upcoming events that it, this single page will take you to um, all of our upcoming events that are listed in Eventbrite. And then if you want to see previous events that have been recorded, I've inserted our YouTube channel. So you can copy the chat and send it to yourself in an email, or you can take a photo of it using your camera. I think a copy is a little easier, but whatever you want to do, it's there for you to use. Great. So thank you very much, Kathy. So again, um, in our instructions, we would have actually torn this uh, sheet. She just did it as a fold, but it, again, just take a few minutes. We'll turn off our cameras. We'll keep on working. Um, take about, this should go fairly quickly, don't you think, Larry? Six no. minutes maybe, and then we can share what you've done. If you have time to cut and paste or collage into it, that would be wonderful. So see you in a minute. Mary Ellen, I'm doing multiple things. So are we doing the accordion fold right now? We are now? doing the accordion fold right now. And I showed everyone how to do it. And then what I'm doing is I'm actually going to be, so I, I showed the accordion fold and I just did mine upside down. 
So the most important thing is, is that you should start with the uh, folded edge up on the time. And then I'm going to collage mine and show you what I came up with for mine. And then when we're done with this, we're going to show you how to do a simple pamphlet. One of the things that uh, she did is she used scrap paper. One of the reasons for using scrap paper is you should always do what I call dummies beforehand before you invest in really good papers or uh, materials so that you have an idea of what your book's gonna be like. You can draw or tip in later. Or in Larry's case, he planned it so he actually produced his strip on the computer, the other one. So always do, um, you know, their, their practices. And just have fun with it. Ariellen, would this be, it, I'm using eight and a half by 11, would it be a four page or would it continue if you turned it over? All right, so uh, if it's eight and a half by 11, when you flip it, it's just going to be four page. You could put two eight and a half by 11s together. Do you want to explain how to do the, the uh, if you put two, Larry, how you would glue them together so it's one continuous book? Well, what, you well the, yeah, um, I have a book here that gives a ex good example of uh, an accordion book where it goes, it's, um, there, it's called London Unfurled. Um, I don't know whether you can see this. Uh, yeah. There we go. And, and what it is is it's it's basically strips of um, of uh, drawings that um, are accordion fold, and uh, one side has London uh, from the south, and the other side has London from the north. So you can see here it is okay uh, north and south. So you see that. So it's got um, just strips of um, drawings and it's showing. Oh, that is wonderful. Larry, you're, uh, you need to unmute yourself. You just muted yourself by accident. I did. <laughs> so also, <laughs> um, I was going to say um, next, next time I will be doing a the tunnel book, but there are lots of ways of doing tunnel books. I was going to show you this tall, small okay. one. This is kind of a fun one because it is normally a tunnel book would be um, like a little theater. Could um, you raise that up higher, school? Larry? Yes. Thank you. So you can sort of see it's this one has the earth with clouds and um, rockets and all sorts of things around it, the moon. So it's, it's kind of fun. But and there, well, there's lots of ways of doing all sorts of things. It's you're only limited by your imagination, as they say. And so we, there was a question really quick of, from Jasmine. How would you suggest making a template and a document? Would it be a Word document? I, I know how I've done it, but if you guys would answer, how to make we, a template? Do you want to talk about that, Larry? Well, um, it depends on what you're um, going to be doing. I sometimes a Word document would be okay, probably would be uh, the, uh, the best way to do it. But um, also I think just working on drawing out your idea uh, and figure out where you're gonna have text and where you're gonna have illustrations. And um, also what are you doing on one, like the, since you're doing accordion fold, one side can be all illustration, the other side can be text or a mixture. It just depends on how you are thinking about your project and how it works with your, your main idea and your vision. And I will say that Larry's gonna be doing the tunnel book. It's going to be a longer class. That's when we'll start at 10 o'clock. Any of you that are here that wanna know about it will post it, uh, but it does start earlier. So you'll be able to join us. We'll send out a list and Larry will produce a PDF. Am I right that they'll have to cut out basically, they'll have to print and cut it out before they sure. come to that class. Yeah. 
Good. Is uh, it on the website? What was that? Someone asked what date is that? I believe it's April 15th. If but not, it's April, April 22nd. April 15th or 22nd. To sign up, is it on Eventbrite? N no, it is not, Mary Ellen. No, it's not on Eventbrite. We'll send that to anybody who came to um, who who came to this because we'll have this list for today. So if you came oh, today, great. you're going to come. We'll automatically send you the link. Thank you, Mary Ellen. You're welcome. Good. And uh, what I'm going to uh, do, we just gave you a couple of minutes, and I barely got started. But let me just uh, show you what my intention is. And you'll notice that what I'm doing with mine is I actually included a little pamphlet book. These are miniature pamphlet books that our friend Richard Hansen would do from our local bookstore. They're literally only four pages and he would take poetry from our local poets with art and create them. I'm putting them together in a book. Not all of them were local artists. He does have Dr. Seuss. Um, how he originally got the idea, and I'll show you the first miniature. This is a book called Intermezzo by Carol Gilbert Wagner in Sacramento. She passed away some years back. She was really one of the um, most important book artists in town. She trained everyone. She did letterpress. But um, this was a series called Poems for All, and they were scattered around town on buses, trains, restrooms, coffee shops, and this were just a left um, along with the tip uh, so that people could just pick them up. So it was an ongoing art project. And I love the idea. I thought of Banksy, right? Instead of writing on walls, we do something else. So you'll notice that, um, and I had just, normally I would sketch this out. My intention is to then using uh, calligraphy or my handwriting to on the opposite page tell some kind of quote from each one of those poets about the poet. So that's just an example of something that I could do in five minutes. Does anybody want to share? I'll, I'll show what I did super fast and I was doing oh, technical stuff, yeah. but I still had time. This is eight and a half by 11, first folded in half the long way and then doing an accordion fold. And because I only had a few minutes, literally about a minute and a half, I just pulled out some stamps just to visually create images where I, I knew I could put either text or draw something or decoupage something or whatever. So that's one example. Thank you. So all our videos there, we can't turn our videos on. Oh, we'll turn them back on. Who's talking and we'll turn it on. We'll uh, motion for you. Well, so Fred, Carol? Fred Chapman. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you wanna hold this up to the camera? So that's my, that's it. Uh, okay, wait a minute, turn. All right, you'll have to, now you, now you should be able to start your video. Thank you for reminding us. Oh. So, well, wait, wait to the green thing. Okay, let me move this up. Yeah, we can't see. Uh... Yeah, mine still says unavailable, so I don't yeah. know. Okay, so, so that's oh, it. If you could a little bit. Oh. put in chat who, who needs their video on and I can turn it on. I'm trying to talk, but my... It's not on. I'm Marianne. Okay, there I am. Hello. <laughs> oh, I, I did that. Let's go off. back to Fred first, and then we'll do Susan. Well, oh. Fred didn't do one. That's his name. Oh, that's you. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, my little birds. My little bird book. <laughs> that's what it is. That's wonderful. So if I can give a, a, a hint. You could, because what a nice gift, I wouldn't mind receiving one. You could, am I right, Larry, uh, to go ahead and scan that in the computer and then have that become your template? Sure. And, oh, okay. then, and then create, because what a nice book too that you might not just want a one of a kind, so you can repeat these as well. Susan, do you want to share? No, I didn't make one. I just wanted to say how much I enjoyed learning how to do it. Oh, well, thank you so much. Yeah, and I, I intend to go out to my art room and do several. <laughs> right, and and the idea today was to give inspiration for doing this just yeah. to realize how easy it can be. Uh, I always have, and I, I, I just don't have my tear stuff because I tried to do this downstairs and my, uh, com my computer's unstable. 
So yeah, being at my table yeah. where I have my tea bar and all the other stuff was really hard. Anybody else want to share? I will. Okay, great. And then let's ask one question. Did uh, did you draw the birds or are they cutouts? Very cool, by the way. Uh, I cheated. They're stickers. Wonderful. Great. <laughs> okay. That's what I could do in a minute, you know. <laughs> One minute. Not cheating. It is not cheating. It it's is not, not cheating. There's no cheating in art. Good. So who else? Who is next? It was going to share. I'll Deborah. do it. Mary Deborah. Deborah. Deborah, thank you. Okay. Well, this is um, a psychological piece, I guess we could say. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. wow. oh good. You used a file folder. I used a file folder because I'm sitting at my work desk. <laughs> And I didn't get very far, but um, this is sort of about retirement. So I, the name of my file folder is retirement. I took a piece, something that we did for a client once upon a time. It was about symbiosis. So I started with symbiosis. That's me and work. And then you open it up, retirement, and I'm blue, and it's kind of bleeding. Ending. And then I, I found, this is just because these, these were the supplies I found in, in an old drawer. I picked my first client's letterhead digital equipment corporation and that's as far as i got very good deborah thank you for sharing that thank you instead of going to a psychiatrist or something <laughs> <laughs> and i'm so glad that you brought that up i love um we did a 12-week program larry and i did a lot of stuff in the school called artworks with everyday stuff of just creating things out of recyclables material you would never throw out and that can have so much meaning to you so thanks for sharing. Anybody else want to share? I will. Thank you, Marianne. Yeah, I like to collect boxes, um, things that I use. So I got some um, Beekman's Ooh. and I, I just use it as a folder and opened it, put little um, post-its in it. Oh. And here's a tea box from Mariage Frere, which I'm going to use as a cover. And then also La Croix, the um, drink. Oh, Take yeah. the packaging and then make a book out of that. Uh, again, Marianne, thank you so much because it is wonderful what you can do by just punching holes and creating a, a pamphlet book and either adding pages or not adding to it. So thank you for sharing that. And anyone else who wants to share before we go on to the pamphlet book. That was great, great example. Okay, good. So I just want to um, uh, show you we uh, some of the pamphlet book ideas. This is an artist, and of course I'm gonna forget their name. I collect their work. You would think I would remember. Um, oh, it's Francis Sham's Impossible Polaroids. So he's taken his Polaroid shots and he's created a pamphlet book just using his Polaroid shots. We are not gonna be able to, now in this instance, he did, did not, um, well, he, he covered it. We, we're not gonna do book covering. We could do that one later. But what I love about this book is it's just taking Polaroid shots of New York. You get a sense of what New York is all alike. And then it's done as one simple sewn pamphlet. This is sewn. I couldn't find my threads today. I wanna show you what you can do if you don't have thread. This is the one tool we didn't list that I'm going to suggest that everybody purchase. Uh, I get mine in thrift stores. This is a long handled stapler. And what's wonderful is you can see how wide it is, how deep you can go in and how big your book can be for just doing a staple bound if you want to. And now we're going to share the screen again and hopefully we can come back to where we were. And this is the just the simplicity of a pamphlet book. And again, I'm just going to use whatever paper I have. You're just folding paper in half again. This is called mountain. That's called valley. You're putting them all together to create a book. And then you're binding in some way. 
Uh, and this is how you do them. Again, everyone will get a copy of this P PDF. You usually just uh, put your pages together. You'll notice that the inside pages are smaller than the, um, the outside. Paper clip it, and then you can see the sew. Put three holes in using an owl, or if you don't have one, I've even used an ice pick, and then using different threads to sew. And when you don't have that, you can just staple bound and create the pamphlet book. Did you want to say anything about pamphlet books, Larry? Oh, well, basically, you've covered it pretty, pretty clearly. I don't think there's much more to explain other than just, you know, how you are creatively being about it. You know, it's it's a pretty simple idea. And uh, uh, it's really nice. People enjoy getting little books from people. Um, we have friends who do pamphlet books for their poetry and that they sell commercially. And so this again is, a, this is a little miniature book that just using leftover paper, it has a double signature, which is just the same thing we did uh, in this one. It does have different signatures because you can only sew successfully about how many pages, Larry, being honest? Well, probably, um, hundred at the most, I think. Probably. Oh, but in a single sew of your hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably, real, probably like 20, 20, probably. About yeah. 20 tops. This one has two. And then you're just sewing the same way that you sewed the, uh, the other. It is thought out because obviously this one is telling a story. This is, it's a, um, this is Jeanette Clark. Um, this is a one of a kind artist oh, book. Ooh. Mary Ellen, hold that closer. We, that was hard to see. A little okay. higher. Higher. Little higher. Oh. And that and you open it, the, and then you open it. Oh, I have it upside down. So hold on. And again, it's just part of her poetry, nice. and she just used vellum. What I like about these is is that I don't like throwing paper away, so I can create miniatures out of tiny things. And let me show you one more thing. Um, so she first. used vellum in between the two pages. So that wouldn't stick or? Vellum period, that's what she used. Oh, okay, thanks. This is another book. Um, this is one of my favorites. Angela was gonna join us today. Uh, Angela is, this is a chat book. Uh, Angela is a fantastic poet. She wanted to be able to create a book. It was gonna cost her to create this book, going to, um, you know, any of the book places was gonna cost her five or $10. She wanted to create a book for a dollar or less so she could sell it for 10 and make some money. So <laughs> all <laughs> so all this is, and this is also hand sewn, is on the computer. The only problem with a book like this is, is that if you're gonna hand bound, you have to think about it. Page one goes up, yeah, uh, okay. page eight. You literally have to do again a dummy fold so that you mark what pages they're on and then just using word she laid it out in word and then she just did that same pamphlet bound that we used she used material here on the front um she comes from trinidad tobago is some material from her home country and it's just a, a collection and she has sold hundreds of these literally how she created them each one became a little bit separate is she got a group of us together and we just had a party and she just printed out the pages. We did the covers, we just folded and sewed and she was done by the time she was done. And then I want to show you um, another, this is because I'm, I'm simplistic. This is an envelope that is masks, um, maps. I love maps. And all I'm gonna do is take the envelope put stationary inside, fold over. And then I'm just going to put two punch holes and use ribbon to close it up. And then I'm going to do um, collage of where I've traveled. And then on the inside pages, the blank pages is where I'll put my story. Nice, nice. And again, the nice thing about this is that when I'm done just using my printer, I should be able to recreate the book. I did buy 12 of the envelopes so that the envelope will be original, but the inside pages will be copied. So those are just samples. We're gonna give you time to see if you can create your own for a minute and then five minutes and we'll come back and share again.
If you are unable to start your video, please send your, just tell me in chat. This is Kathy. I think I'm called Bits and Pieces. And um, I will enable your video. I'll show you one book we're not going to do today. This one took me seven and a half seconds. A simple <laughs> pop-up book. Yeah. Oh, if you are interested um, in knowing more about um, book design, um, there are lots of classes at the San Francisco Center for the Book that are um, available. You can look up their website and they have um, lots of different classes. Um, usually they have like about five to 12 people in a class, but they, they will be, um, uh, you know, if you do a pop-up book or a accordion book or other types of books, they will have like one day classes. So it's easy to go down to San Francisco where they are located and take one of their classes and they really have excellent um, teachers. Thank you, Larry. We have a question I think you can answer while people are working. How do you make an accordion book longer than a single page? By gluing the pages together. And what you will do is you will have, there are certain kinds of glues that you'll be finding out that people use for paper sculptures and, and um, book art. And you will be using that kind of glue and being very careful not to get the glue all over everything. But um, once you kind of get the hang of how to glue things together, it goes pretty fast and pretty easy. But um, you can make uh, uh, the, the, the binding or the, the putting the papers together, you can make it where it's pretty much uh, invisible. Well, how much of an overlap would you have, Larry? It, it depends on, on the paper and depends on the book. I think, you know, you, it's, it's kind of experimental, but probably a lot of times the overlap is um, either a small amount or it could be the whole page. Okay. So, but usually the, I find that um, usually about, I think it's about an inch, three quarters to an inch. Yeah. And th this is just, and you can, uh, you know, do both of your books, you know, pretend that I did the extra fold, right? You can do them before or after, mm -hmm. um, you know, either one to extend. And you do use a PVA glue is one of the best glues to um, be able to use because it's also archival. Which is what most, you can find um, those glues in a special section of, um, university art for um, art book binding and things like that. So the original accordion books just through history, and we didn't go through a lot of history, but we had um, Francisco Alarcon, and I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the other person. He did a codex book that I have downstairs called Evangeline, that's a history of the Mayan people that is over 250 feet continuous. And he did that by just, uh, you know, even in that book, that is a hand done book that is continuously um, added onto. So you can make them as long as you want to. You can use, uh, I do suggest using good quality papers. If you do, am, am I right, Larry? If you yep. can get to an art show, uh, art place. Uh, now that we're on COVID, um, our favorite place in Sacramento is gone, but we still have university arts. I'm just as happy with Blick um, yep. online and Flax for those of you that are in San Francisco or though now they're in Oakland, am I right? Yes. Flax is wonderful for papers. I probably have right now 200 different papers that used to be as much as $6 a sheet, which are what, 20 by 30 or longer, Larry? Yes. What's an average? Uh, and I buy them for a dollar when they're shifting out into something new. So papers can be one of the most fun investments that you buy. And uh, unless they've um, closed, there is a nice uh, flax store at Fort Mason also. You're right. And I will show you one other thing. Uh, this is a, a book we're not doing today. It's uh, Janice Kelly did. Um, we did this as a class. This is just using eight and a half by 11 and using ring binder. The reason I'm showing you this is this paper was paper that I made 
out of leftover paper. So all those little scraps that are left, especially if you're using good quality paper, I just remade the paper and I was able to, we, we um, all did that where they're just using the scraps. So saved everything. I don't throw anything away. There are always little bits and pieces you can use. Lynette had a question. Um, she's still working on her accordion book. Yeah. Lynette, did you join via Eventbrite? Is that how you found out about it? She's got her uh, voice turned off. And I'm going to try to answer her question by folding and showing. So let me fold mine really quickly. There's two ways of doing this. Because she was asking about the PDF. We can't send a PDF through Eventbrite. That's why I will do that. Everybody who joined today, Kathy will send me the list if you're on Eventbrite. I will have your email address. You will receive the PDFs via email directly, not through uh, Eventbrite. Okay, this, so... All in right. this instance, what I'm suggest to make it easy because I'm sloppy, I did the fold on both sheets of paper, and then I'm going to glue two equal sized sheets together when I go to glue it. Yeah. Whether you use the whole sheet like Mary Ellen was talking about, or a smaller piece, you know, like a, a couple of inches or an inch, it depends on how the paper is because some papers look better when they have the whole overlap and some work out fine with a smaller piece of overlap. Right. All okay. right, so we have seven minutes uh, or about, does anybody feel like they're, oh, you can make envelope books too, just out of a number of envelopes, slipping the flap inside. I love doing those books. Uh, I agreed. And someone said, I joined via the Ren email sent yesterday. Uh, you will automatically receive the links if you did it that way. So anyone want to share what they've come up with? Kate. You're on mute, Kate. You're on mute, Kate. Okay. And I've also set it up so that she should be able to do her camera as well. Yeah, I... I there. I'm yeah. trying to ask you her. had to give you had to give me permission to unmute. Okay. All right. So I'm fine now. Um, so this this sheet, I get that um, stamping ton magazine, and this is um, Somerset Studio, and in it they have yeah. all kinds of paper. So I did my, um, I did my uh, accordion and I just stamped it, but it's very nicely printed already and you can do collage on top of it. Um, I wanna be pushy and ask okay. if I can show my um, book that I've made from another class and I used Coptic Stitch. Oh, thank you. And uh, we do have book artists in, in town. She won't be able to do anything to the fall. Um, but Nikki um, uh, Artichoke, Deconstructed Artichoke Press is going to do Coptic Stitch for us. Oh, fun. It, it, it's a uh, longer workshop. Oh, my yeah. gosh. This I glued. It's a, a tin heart. And then I just collaged um, about 10 pages. And um, you could stand them up. And I've done um, three of them for presents. Nice. That is uh -oh. wonderful. One just so fell Kate, Kate, how long did that take you to do so when we're planning our time? Oh, um, maybe. I'd say two hours. The Coptic stitch is the hardest part right. to kind of learn. And, and you don't have to do this many pages. You could do like five cardboards. Um, this is a plain cardboard that I got from my teacher. Um, and um, I like it. it it's, it's a fun, fun project, kind of. 
I'm Good. meant and to go back and add more to it, but I haven't. <laughs> did, did somebody else, and you know, there's so much in book arts that you can't do, how to find the grain, uh, how to find archival uh, papers. I oftentimes use the end of uh, cereal boxes. Um, you know, things like this are not archival. So you do, uh, do you want to explain what Davy board is or book board, Larry, for those people who want to invest in purchasing it? Well, book board is um, a board that you would be using um, and you would get it from an art store, which is used inside a binding so that it is what keeps the binding hard and um, so it won't be flimsy. Great. So you, the binding would usually be covered in some sort of uh, special paper or cloth that would um, make the cover for the book. And so for Jolene, Jolene, I'm trying to... Um... I did it, Mary Ellen. Oh good, you did it already. So Jolene, do you wanna share? You have to unmute. Yes. <laughs> it starts here, friends. We can hear you. Yeah, it's just photos of friends. Oh, how nice. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. That is good, good. Anybody else? Sharing, Jolene? Did anybody else like to share? I'll share. Dan, Susan. Well, I'm very proud of myself because actually I just was able to make an accordion book out of paper. <laughs> you know, that's not easy to figure out to make sure it's bending the right way. Right. So I, I know this is, you know, way uh, lesser than any of you guys did. But for me, this was like a little challenge here to figure out no, to get the folds all right. No, you know. getting the folds right and scoring, yeah. sometimes it's easier to measure out with the ruler and score, just say it's going to be three inches or whatever score. That way you're folding to the score and it'll make it much easier. Uh, you yeah. have to be careful what material you use. And I'm just trying to see where I just had it. I had these little things to show you how to do them. And when I went to fold them, they split because the paper was so old. Oh, that's not good. Well, I wanted to comment too that um, I have made some of these books before with my um, students in my 4-H group. And I went to Costco and you know those big sheets that they have in between um, like the product? They have these huge sheets and um, that's a really good material. They have many different kinds. One kind actually feels like paper mache. And um, that watercolor is really nice to make uh, an accordion book. Cause I have to do all the cutting. Like you say, I have to measure it all. And the other is just white uh, kind of thin cardboard, uh, not too thick. Um, anyhow, I just wanted to share that if anyone needs to economize a little bit. Great, good, thank you. Someone else wanted to share? We've got about one minute, Mary Ellen. Okay. Any last person? And then what we'll do is we'll stop the recording and then we'll go to the green room for five minutes just to kind of close up. But uh, if everyone is done sharing, we wanna thank you very much for coming to the program today. Kathy is going to talk about what's coming up next. Good, thank you. Oh, you said that and I am not prepared to talk about that. Oh, do we know what's um, but We have these <laughs> weekly. I want to just remind folks, if you scroll up right now in the chat, I posted the two links. Actually, I'll repost it. I'll copy it and post it again that talk about our upcoming events and our previous events. If we can, I... Uh, usually post on YouTube. Um, sometimes it's proprietary and we are not able to post, to record it and then post it. But if we can, we post it on YouTube and um, the events page lists all of our upcoming events. And the reason that I suggest you go there, for those of you who are local and in Renaissance, um, you will not see everything that Friendship Force is doing. Friendship Force, I try to put it on our Facebook page and get it in our constant contact email, but some of the events um, don't make it for whatever reason. So the events page that I've entered into chat will give you more options. 
So yeah, Mary Matthew. Ellen, thank you, everyone. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and stop could the we recording. Go two minutes. Oh, stop the recording. We're going to go two minutes longer to let the last people share, though.